Some diseases that only cause subtle changes in the body can have such an enormous impact on quality of life. Peronis disease, also known as bent penis or curved penis, is one of them. If you are not afraid of knives, surgery will be the solution for you. But if you are looking for an unbloody solution, oh boy. My name is Stefan Buntrock, I'm a urologist and in this video I'm going to talk about treatment options in Peronis disease. If you haven't watched my video about Peronis disease, please make sure you do so. It will be much easier to follow along with the therapeutic options outlined here. In my practice I see a lot of patients with Peronis, most of them in the late, the stable phase of the disease. They are looking for advice because they usually have been offered surgery for their problem, which they don't want by the way. And now they ask whether there are possibilities to avoid an operation and whether something non-surgically can be done. Generally speaking, in Peronis disease not very much is known and a whole lot still has to be discovered. When going through the guidelines, there is an abundance of different treatments that have been tried, that are recommended, that are not recommended and that might be recommended in the future. So this only shows one thing. If there isn't one remedy, but a whole bunch of them, effective treatment is difficult. Otherwise it would simply state, apply this ointment three times a day for two weeks and you'll be fine. But it is not as easy as that. Just to give a short summary, Peronis disease consists of an early inflammatory phase, which lasts for roughly 18 months, give or take. During this time the penis will bend at erections, sometimes reaching angles of 90 degrees and more. It will shorten and many men will experience erectile dysfunction. The inflammatory phase is then followed by a late stable phase where the detrimental effects of the disease stop and come to an end. Calcification of the hardened areas of the tunica albuginea will form with time often introducing the late stage. When it comes to surgery, there are two things one has to bear in mind. First, don't undergo any operation in the inflammatory phase. As long as the penis is still gaining curvature, there's a big chance that it will continue to bend after it has been surgically straightened out. Second, when the curvature reaches angles that make intercourse impossible, non-surgical strategy become very limited. So the most logical way to approach Peronis disease would be to diagnose it early, stop the inflammation and preserve as much penile integrity as possible. This is a problem because too many men choose to ignore the early signs or are too embarrassed to look for medical help. Painful erections in the beginning are quite common. Sometimes, however, they are absent and a sudden onset of increasing penile bending at erections is observed. At this point, I advise to use a multimodal therapy plan. There are some medications that might be able to stop the inflammation. Among them, there is Tadalafil, originally designed for erectile dysfunction. However, its specific mode of action also goes along with anti-inflammatory features that could ameliorate the inflammation going on at the Tulinica albuginia. Antioxidants also act anti-inflammatory. There are some options. Personally, I favor citrulline and L-arginine. I also recommend a penile traction device to prevent penile shrinking and to modify the scar tissue that is forming where the inflammation takes place. Traction can safely be used and has remodeling features by stretching out the scar tissue and making it more flexible. Gentle massaging the scar and careful bending the penis to the opposite direction also contributes to the efficacy of the traction device. Alternatively, a vacuum constriction device could be used, but the outcomes of a traction device that can be worn over several hours seem to be better. Let's talk a bit about shockwave therapy, ESWT. Today in 2021, according to my experience, along with the recommendation of the guidelines, ESWT has no place in calcified plaques. I have tried almost every strategy imaginable to crush those calcifications. I have cranked up my machine to crazy energy levels, applied up to 20 sessions, but failed nearly every time. There are scientific reports saying that it is possible in a certain number of cases, but I am not able to confirm that. However, it might be possible that ESWT has its place in non-calcified plaques. Additionally, I think it could stop the inflammation at an early stage. I'm still working on this and I'll give you an update in 2022. When it comes to pain, 
shock waves are definitely the thing to do. They not only reduce pain, but it will reliably go away after four to six treatment sessions. This could be of importance for you guys who are living outside of Germany. I've never treated a patient here for erectile pain due to peronis. German men tend to accept pain as the salt in life and rarely want ESWT just for feeling less pain. So you see, we are pretty tough out here. Thanks for watching. Please leave your comments down below and be a tough guy. Hit the subscribe button even if it might be a little painful. Bye bye.